Crimson was developed by the Ecosystem Corporation with funding by the Office of Naval Research. The idea behind Crimson is to understand how uh, perceptions within a population evolve over the course of time. Now, Crimson uh, is targeted specifically at uh, populations undergoing SSTR, in other words, stability, security, transition, and reconstruction. But more broadly, it's uh, intended for use whenever you're trying to understand the perceptions within a larger population. So one example we're looking at with Crimson is uh, the situation in Afghanistan right now, where someone on the front lines with a limited budget might want to understand the trade-offs between how they might spend that budget. So for example, you might want to understand, should I spend my money on uh, communications? So should I uh, be dealing with the BBC or Radio Afghanistan? Alternatively, should I be drilling some wells or building a clinic? So I might want to understand, understand given my limited budget, where to spend that money, and by having a um, a zero risk uh, way of doing that by running simulations over the course of time, I can understand by spending that uh, budget within a simulation, at the end of that simulation I can uh, see where uh, the best result in terms of the population perceptions end up. I've been working with a company in Arlington, Virginia called Courage Services, and they have been uh, had people on the ground in Afghanistan, they've been combing surveys, and based on this they have data for over 40,000 villages in, in Afghanistan. We're uh, focusing our uh, investigation a bit, uh, a, a bit more than that, and we're looking at uh, Uruzgan province in, Af in Afghanistan, and are looking at uh, a few dozen villages in Uruzgan province. For these villages, we have information like uh, uh, ethnicity within the village, so who makes up that village, and uh, more importantly, how the ethnicities, various ethnicities feel about each other, so how they might uh, uh, deal with each other in terms of trusting each other during a word of mouth exchange. And another important aspect of the data from Courage Services is communications information. So we know what uh, radio stations and other forms of communications are reaching a given village, and we can uh, use that and information about word of mouth to understand uh, how uh, various communications campaigns and other uh, interventions uh, affecting this, these people in these villages affect how they feel about various actors over the course of time. To give you a more concrete idea of how you might use Crimson, let's look at a specific example. And what we're showing here, we're looking at a scenario where ISAF, the coalition, is making investments in the water infrastructure, as shown by the icon in blue at the top. In addition to that, this scenario makes the assumption of negative communications about the coalition presumably on behalf of the Taliban. In this case, the negative communications are about the water infrastructure. So, for example, the Taliban may be saying that the coalition has tainted the water supply. Furthermore, the scenario is assuming the existence of what we call a contingency, related to the district's crops, as shown by the green icon at the bottom. This might reflect in an instance of drought, for example. When you run the scenario we've defined, you get the results shown here in dashboard form. This describes metrics such as which locations or which tribes have been most positively or negatively impacted. You can also look at the impact breakdown one tribe at a time. You also see a breakdown of the count of villages that are either pro-Taliban or pro-coalition. In this example, the majority of villages are pro-coalition. All of this information can be inspected geographically using the map. While we have access to data for 40,000 or so Afghan villages, in this case, we're focusing on 24 specific villages in one district of Uruzgan province. For a more detailed view of the results, we turn to the charts to re review perceptions and support levels. In the particular scenario shown here, we're seeing an obvious pro-Taliban leaning in the population, as shown in red on the overall support chart. Coalition support has dropped slightly, whereas Taliban support has gone markedly upward. Since the dashboard suggested that more villages actually support coalition forces, this suggests to us that the larger villages are pro-Taliban, but that the coalition has made inroads in the smaller villages. An analyst using Crimson faces the challenge of designing a scenario that has a more positive outcome for coalition forces. This example can be contrasted with the alternative shown here. In this case, we consider an investment not in infrastructure, but instead in training the local police force. This is reflected in the yellow icon at the top, which represents investments toward improving the safety level. The negative communications about the coalition are unchanged, as is the assumption of a contingency involving crops in the district. If we toggle between these two scenarios, we see a fairly salient difference in where overall support levels end up. In the water infrastructure investment scenario, we see a spread between the support levels. 
reflecting a distinct Taliban advantage, whereas for the investment in training the local police, the difference is almost gone. The two charts on the left, labeled ISAF support and Taliban support, can provide some additional insight into what's happening here at a finer level of granularity, in this case considering the allegiances of the local tribes. Specifically, the Nurzai tribe, shown in green on this chart, is seen to be much more supportive of the coalition by the end of the scenario than they are of the Taliban. If you know that the Nurzai are by far the largest tribe in the dis district, this helps explain what's happening to overall support levels. More specifically, the key to understanding what's happening here comes back to Crimson's underlying data for the different tribes, specifying the relative importance of the water infrastructure as opposed to the importance of general safety levels. Based on our knowledge of the local situation, the input data specify that safety levels are more important to the population than the availability of water, and that's what we see reflected in the results seen here. So to recap, this simple example has demonstrated how we've used Crimson to compare how different investment options have affected support levels for coalition forces versus the Taliban, and then how we were able to drill down either by village or by ethnic group to see what's happening at a lower level of detail to get some insight into the dynamics of the situation.